Welcome to SNAE, the show where we provide you with music to give you a lift, motivation to lift you higher, and the ministry to catapult you into the heavens so you can soar and become all that God intended for you to be when he made you. I am your host, Dr. Jermaine Gordon, and we have a very exciting show lined up for you today. Teachers play a very key role in the building of any nation, any society. And we have a video we would like to share with you about a very important lesson that if you're a teacher and you're watching, you should never ever forget this. And if you're not a teacher and you, you have a friend, a family member who is a teacher, feel free to share it. Enjoy. A young man went over to another Jew at a wedding. He said, you remember me? He said, I don't remember you, who are you? He introduces himself. He says, ah, you were my student. Third grade, you were my student. Yeah? Wow, I haven't seen you in so many years. How is your life? What are you involved in? He says, I'm a teacher. He says, wow, just like me. What inspired you to become a teacher? What inspired me to become a teacher was you. He said, how did I inspire you to become a teacher? I saw what an impact you had on me. I realized what an impact I can have on children. I decided to go into education. He said, what type of impact did I have on you? So he said, I'll remind you, but I'm sure you remember the story. There was one day that one of my friends got himself, his mother or father bought him a beautiful wristwatch, and I dreamt for a watch, and I didn't afford one. So I decided to steal his watch. He had it in his pocket. I took his watch. I stole it. He came into class. He saw somebody stole his watch. He came complaining to the teacher, somebody stole his watch. So you made an announcement. Whoever took this boy's watch, please return it. I was too embarrassed and I didn't want to return it, so I didn't return it. So you locked the door and you said, I'm going to have to line everybody up and empty their pockets in order to get back the watch. And that's what you did. And I thought to myself, this is going to be the most shameful moment of my life. And then you said, all boys line up at the wall, but I want everybody to have their eyes closed. Everybody's eyes must be closed. And you went from pocket to pocket, and everybody's eyes were closed. And then you came to my pocket, and you found the watch, and you took it out, and you went through everybody's pockets with everybody's eyes closed. And then you said, okay, everybody can open their eyes. You gave the watch back to its owner, and you never, ever said a word to me throughout the entire year. You never mentioned the story, you never mentioned the episode. And when I thought to myself how you saved my dignity that day, instead of being stereotyped as a ganev, as a thief, as a chakran, as a lawyer, as a no goodnik, as a despicable child, you really saved my soul, you saved my dignity. And you never mentioned a word, not only to anybody else, not only to the owner, but even to me. It was, it happened, it's over, I understood the message, and when I looked at that, I saw it, I said, wow, this is what a teacher is, this is what a real educator is, this is what I want to do with my life, and therefore I went into education. And the teacher is listening to him, and he says, wow, that's amazing, <laughs> that's really amazing, but he says, but Rebbe, you don't remember, you don't remember the story? Like when you see me and you hear my name, I'm sure you remember the story that I stole the watch and what you did and you didn't want to embarrass me. He said, everybody's eyes closed. And I'm the person. He says, actually, I don't know. I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know the story. He says, why not? Like, it's a pretty dramatic story. He said, because I also closed my eyes. So I want to bless you and bless all of us that we should be able to uh, be such, such leaders, such teachers, such parents, such educators, such mashpiyim, to be able to be there for people in this way. Over the last four years, we have been using music, music, art, journaling, and various tools to go into the schools all across Jamaica. And we have been seeing tremendous improvement in behavior. We've been seeing turnaround and transformation and salvation and healing and deliverance have come to families, many families and many homes. And we want to just show you a little bit of one of the primary schools down into the rural areas of Montego Bay, St. James. 
a primary school by the name of Rawlington Primary. Enjoy these little sweeties for another six minutes or so. Enjoy. No? What do you normally do? Only one more song for you, then I'll tell you a story, okay? Lift your hands now, everybody. Lift your hands. Everybody say, Lord. Bless me.
Approximately four years ago, I quit my professional job after the fatal, unfortunate, fatal stabbing of a 14-year-old high school student on the bus over his cell phone. And what broke that story broke my heart. And what was interesting about that story is that it was his first time taking the public bus, the public transportation, and he, an experience that he never lived to regret. And so I quit my job, my professional job, and has been going around Jamaica using music and art and so many other tools that the Lord has given me to, to, with the fight against trauma and, and violence upon our children and upon our communities. And the program is called Inspiring Our Future 360 Degrees. And we look at the five main influences of a child, the home, their, the community, their peers, the church and school, home, community, their peers, church and school. So we look at what are the main five influences of a child's life. And we've been designing programs to, to impact each of these areas. You no doubt saw a while ago the Roehampton Primary School. And we, 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 we go into the schools, we, 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 we not only address the students, we address the, the teaching staff. We have empowerment sessions for teachers and the entire school staff. We, had, we started in February of this year what we call PET, PET, Parents Empowerment Thursday, with our, our resident parenting specialist, Reverend Carleen Rickard. And we want to just share a little bit of her encouragement to fathers. Here goes. Fathers, you're not an afterthought, you're a part. It took two. You may have heard of DNA, and DNA is a double helix. And it's not one, it's two. And one from the father and one from the mother. And now I can say that the legal system is catching up with the Bible and what printing about because fathers have the exact rights and the same privilege as mothers exact right and if research later on you find out if you're not working it's your right to be looking after the children at home just like your wife or your partners but you have the illegal right and you know the, 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 the verse that said all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and call according to the purpose and it's so wonderful at this time all the family is in one place fathers and mothers and children and it's an opportunity for all of you to take an active part interacting and becoming a family interacting and going out and doing things i want to say something before i go into my talk in this isolation as you are at the moment there's sometimes when you get bored and depressed because you're in isolation and that will actually suppress your immune system. So I'm saying to you, parents, especially fathers, an opportunity to take your little one out for a walk or for a drive to change the environment. They're social animals, social beings, and they like to be out and about. So don't just sit down in the house and say that the man, Prime Minister, turn on the yard. No, you need to get out and go out there and do things with your children. Inspiring Our Future 360 Degrees is in its fourth year and 
we are looking forward to having a launch, an official launch of this initi initiative under the foundation, Love Has Hands Foundation, happening on April 25, 2021. It's a virtual launch and we want to share our flyer with you because we want you to participate in this great moment, this great experience. Love Has Hands, the, the foundation under which all of these uh, uh, what we call programs will fall under the Inspiring Our Future 360 Degrees, the Share Your Sunday Pot, the Family Supporting Family, and a very key aspect of what impacts the very core of this nation, Fix My Bathroom or Fix My Public School Bathrooms. I had a frightening experience going across the nation, inspecting the, the public school bathrooms, and I, I had to know form, a, 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 I won't call it a coalition, but form a, 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 an initiative around it on what is it that we can do to improve the state of our public school bathroom. We have done tests and surveys looking at the condition and why it, it has been like that. The impact, the emotional impact, the, the physical and, and, and health impact that it has on our children. And so that is also one of the programs. We want you to experience that moment. So make sure you are in the room Make sure you are in the love room on the April 25. Today's scripture is coming to you from 2 Kings 4, from verse 1 through to 7. Here goes. Second Kings 4, from verse 1 through to 7. One day, the wife of a man from the guild of prophets called out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband is dead. You well know what a good man he was, devoted to God. And now the man to whom he was in debt is on his way to collect by taking my two children as slaves. Elisha said, I wonder how I can be of help. Tell me, what do you have in your house? Nothing, she said. Well, I do have a little oil. Here's what you do, said Elisha. Go up and down the street and borrow drugs and bowls from all your neighbors. And not just a few, all you can get. Then come home and lock the door behind you and you and your sons. Pour oil into each container. When each is full, set it aside. She did what he said. She locked the door behind her and her sons. As they brought the containers to her, she filled them. When all the jugs and bowls were full, she said to one of her sons, Another jug, please. He said, That's it. There are no more jugs. Then the oil stopped. She went and told the story to the man of God. He said, Go, sell the oil and make good on your debts. Live, both you and your sons, on what's left. The world is in a crisis and we are crying out to God, Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. Someone's crying, Lord, Kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord, Kumbaya. Someone's dying, Lord, Kumbaya. This has been one of the, 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 the songs, we call it a Negro spiritual when I was growing up. 
And so we want to share this instrumental with you. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Where you are, you might be in need of healing. Watching this right now, you might be in need of urgent invasion of heaven into your circumstances i am agreeing with you today kumbaya my lord where you are today you might need direction and understanding and you may, might need guidance and encouragement and support i am saying and i'm crying out to god on your behalf kumbaya lord kumbaya question for this week very interesting question if you have been enjoying these questions if they have been helping you to think provocatively or to think introspectively on your life and your future and where you're going today's today's question is no different here goes We hope 
you enjoyed today's show. We thank you for being a part of this experience, Snake, the show where we share with you music, motivation, and ministry. I want to pray with you before we go that the Spirit and the presence of the Lord will help you to identify exactly what is it that you need to be focusing on now. In this season, in this phase, you don't want to miss, you don't want to miss, you don't want to make any mistakes. You want to know with precision and divine accuracy where you will need to be right now. Is it more love? Is it more faith? Is it going? Is it pausing? Is it fasting? Is it praying? Is it writing? Is it listening? Is it publishing? What is it? And so I pray with you now, my brother, my sister, that the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon you according to Isaiah 11 and verse 2. That the Spirit of counsel and might will rest upon you. The Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord will rest heavily upon you and bring you peace and clarity in Jesus' name. I am your host, Dr. Jermaine Gordon. We would love to hear from you. Write to us on the email address provided. God bless you. With everything within me, I declare your glory.